What's going on, KS Nation? Your boy, the Dreadlock Blood here, back with another video. Before we get into this video, I just want to let you guys know that I am still currently working on other content for the YouTube channel. Just the other day, I finished up my script for part three of the rewriting of the Majin Buu Saga. One and two have already been thrown in the can. I finished up part three. I have two more parts to write a script for, and those should be done before the month is out. So once those scripts are finished, um, look for those videos to be out soon. I've been having a lot of fun rewriting the Boo Saga. It's been very interesting, the twists and turns I've been taking with the whole arc. So I think you're going to enjoy this. So be on the lookout for those series of five videos of the whole rewrite of the Majin Buu Saga. I'm also going to be trying to knock out a couple of videos this weekend. I actually have a five day weekend. I am off of work today. Well, I'm off a of day work today. Tomorrow, I, of course, have the weekend, and Monday is Veterans Day, so I don't have work then either. So I'm going to be using this weekend to not only do things around my new apartment, I am also going to be knocking out some videos for you as well. Speaking of which, I know I promised you guys a tour of my new apartment, so I will probably give that to you later on today. Um, it's not going to be much. I mean, it's just really kind of, you know... Just, it's really kind of short, so definitely look out for a video on my new apartment. I know I've been here for two months already, but, you know, just so you guys can give a look, see, about where I'm living at right now. So, all that being said, be on the lookout for all those new pieces of content coming within the next couple of days or so, and I hope you guys enjoy them. Like, you're going to enjoy this one. I know a lot of you are probably thrown off by the title of this video, but there's going to be a reason for that. I am a huge fan of Terminator. I've been a fan since Terminator 2. In fact, Terminator 2 was the first Terminator movie I watched. I watched Terminator 2 first, and then I watched the first Terminator. I've seen every Terminator movie since then, with the exception of Dark Fate. I have not watched Dark Fate, and there's a reason for that. Just by the first trailer... Uh, I didn't do reactions to any of the trailer, but just by the first trailer alone, I felt like I know what the story behind Dark Fate was going to be about. The reason why I say that is because I felt like Dark Fate basically took concepts and elements from Terminator Rise of the Machines, Terminator Salvation, and Terminator Genesis. And they just all took, I guess, quote unquote, the best parts of those movies and put it in this one by and just brought back Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. That's pretty much all he did. So it's not that I don't want to go see it. It's just that I just kind of feel like I already know what the movie is going to be about. I mean, based on what the, a lot of the reviewers and YouTubers have been saying, Terminator Dark Fate is just a retread of Terminator 1 and 2. You know, why really jump at the chance to go see it when we've kind of already seen it already. I know a lot of people have been ripping this movie apart and a lot of it deal a lot, a lot of it comes from this whole idea that they took a woke approach to presenting this movie. I don't think that's what's killing the Terminator franchise. Franchise is what's killing the Terminator franchise. For all intents and purposes, Terminator 2 was supposed to be it. They stopped Judgment Day and they got to live their lives happily ever after. But they just kept coming back for more with Rise of the Machines, Salvation, and Genesis, and now even Dark Fate. I've been on this kick as of late, as I mentioned before, with the rewrite of the Majin Buu saga, but that's not the only one. You, if you've been following my channel, then you know I've taken the time out to try to fix other things in different franchises that I happen to like. I've done it with Mortal Kombat 11. I've done it with um, Brightburn. I've done it with Justice League. I've done it with Batman v Superman. I've done it with a lot of things that I happen to like. And, and again, and I say that I like those things a lot. I just think there were some things that probably could have been tweaked to make those better. And as such, I'm going to be doing that today as I try to fix the Terminator franchise. Now, keep in mind that while Dark Fate is supposed to be a sequel that takes place directly after Terminator 2 Judgment Day, we cannot ignore the fact that the other movies in the franchise do exist. Rise of the Machines, Salvation, and Genesis. 
And because of that, I had to take those into consideration. So basically what I did, and this actually didn't take me that long. It like took me like less than a day to put this together. I took all of those movies starting from Rise of the Machines all the way to Dark Fate. And I just tweaked them up a little bit. I figured since those movies do exist, they are a part, in my mind, they are a part of the continuity. And because they are a part of the continuity, I have to include them. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take everything, every installment in that franchise and fix it up. So it lines up more with Terminator and Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And we're going to start off with Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, which I've essentially retitled Terminator 3, No Fate. I would, so in my mind, Terminator 3 goes like this. The character of Sarah Connor, she doesn't die off screen. That, 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 was, that was probably the most injustice thing they could have done to the character of Sarah Connor, who essentially started this whole franchise. She, she, she was the start of the Terminator franchise. So, as opposed to killing Sarah Connor off screen, I simply put it to where Sarah Connor just lives off the grid. You know, John Connor in Terminator 3 states that, you know, after she was diagnosed with cancer, or I believe it was leukemia, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, she was given, I think, six months to live, but she held on for three years. And the thing that time, all she just did was stockpile weapons and weapons and weapons and weapons that she put in her coffin, which laid in the tomb. In this instance, she just lives off the ground. She's still doing the same thing. She's still stockpiling weapons because in her mind, Judgment Day was never really stopped. She still thinks there's a danger, as John Connor always said. So, all she's been doing is just been stockpiling. She lives off the grid. Um, John Connor is gone. I didn't say he was dead. I just said he's gone. So, that essentially means the focus of Terminator 3 will not be John Connor like the original was. My Terminator 3 will not have John Connor as a focus. I did a switch also. I switched the TX with the Rev-9. The TX was the Terminator character that was played by Kristana Loken, and the Rev-9 is the newest model of Terminator that exists in Dark Fate. I switched them for the simple fact that the Rev-9 is basically, the Rev-9 is basically a combination of the T-3000, which is what happened to John Connor in Terminator Genesis, and the T-1000, you know, you know, with the exception that it can take its liquid metal exoskeleton and form a new Terminator, essentially being two Terminators in one. The TX was a Terminator that pretty much had the same exact thing. It just that it couldn't separate itself from its metal endoskeleton. And the fact that the TX had a plasma cannon attached to it. You can't create a Terminator like that and only use it one time. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you create a Terminator that has a liquid metal exoskeleton and a plasma cannon and all you're going to do is just use it one time? Arnold Schwarzenegger's T-100 has been in... It's been in every single Terminator movie. I mean, you can even count Terminator Salvation because... Yes, it was a body double, and the likeness was CGI onto its face, but it's still the Arnold Schwarzenegger T-800 that's been in every single Terminator movie. So, and the T-1000 has shown up technically four times. Two of those times were small bits, but the T-1000, like Terminator, has shown up four times in the franchise. So, why not utilize a Terminator like the TX in a later installment? Someone that has a, a, a fucking plasma cannon. Like, are you serious right now? And you're going to just use that one time? It doesn't make any sense. So, I switched. So, for ter for my Terminator 3, I have switched the TX and the Rev-9. So, basically, I call it I call it the T-9. As the T-1000 was like a completely... Actually, you know what? Let me take that back. I'm still going to call it the TX. I'm still going to call it the TX. So... It's just the Rev-9 will take place of the TX in Terminator 3. So, 
in this instance, is going to almost keep the same plot as the original Terminator 3. This time, the TX is sent back to hunt down Sean Connor's new talents, mainly Catherine Brewster. So, with John Connor pretty much out of the picture, we can focus on other characters. So, the focus of this movie will be Catherine Brewster. The T-800 is, of course, sent back to protect Brewster, and they essentially go to Sarah Connor for help. The T-800 says the classic line that he does in the movie, that judgment day is inevitable. So, Sarah's suspicions were correct from the start. She realized that judgment day wasn't stopped, it was merely postponed. In this movie, Sarah Connor dies getting Catherine Brewster to Crystal Peak, as opposed to Kate's father dying to get them there, and both John and Kate and the T-800 making it to Crystal Peak, which is, you know, the underground bunker, it's going to be Sarah that gets them there. And she dies in the process. So, so that's how Sarah Connor dies in this movie. Uh, the T-800 actually meets them there at Crystal Peak um, bunker, and she destroys the TX the same way he does in the movie with his, um, you know, fuel cell by destroying it. Kate Brewster is going to enter the bunker, and there she is going to find John Connor. So basically, the T-800 was ordered by Sarah Connor to bring John Connor to the bunker to keep him safe. They basically kept John Connor off the grid completely. Um, you know, whether it be like they changed his name, you know, things like that. You know, something that they could do to keep him from being discovered by Skynet. So pretty much that's what happened in my Terminator 3. So Sarah Connor is off the grid. John Connor is off the grid. He's like gone. He's believed to be dead. The TX and the Rev-9 switch places. Um, and the Rev the TX, well, the Rev-9 is sent back to c kill John Connor's lieutenants, mainly Catherine Brewster, because she's pretty much the next, you know, in line to lead after John. You know, T-800 is sent back to protect John, protect Kate, you know, goes, gets Sarah Connor for help. You know, Sarah Connor dies, getting Kate to safety. Uh, the T-800 destroys the Rev-9. And John Connor and Kate Brewster meet up and they survive and they survive Judgment Day in the bunker. Which leads me into Terminator Salvation. Now I have to make this perfectly clear. Terminator Salvation had the chance to be one of the one of the better Terminator sequels. They had a good premise. It was essentially the future war, which we have been getting teased about since Terminator 1. They had Christian Bale as John Connor, which at the time to me made the most sense in the world because in wrestling terms, Christian Bale was the most over actor in Hollywood at the time. This guy was, he was still doing Batman. He was still Batman in the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy. So to get him as John Connor just made the absolute most sense to me in the world. So as far as termination and salvation is concerned, the only thing that really didn't sit well with me was the that the fact that the majority of the focus in the movie was on Marcus Wright. This is the future war between Man, the Resistance and Skynet. That's what we're supposed to be seeing. That's what should have been the main focus of the movie. So, and for, and for my Terminator Salvation, the focus on the movie is going to be John Connor, and Kyle Reese. You know, Kyle Reese kind of took a back seat in Terminator Salvation, which doesn't make any sense to me because Kyle Reese kind of gives birth or helps in the conception of the future leader of the resistance. So the focus should be the focus is essentially going to be John Connor trying to essentially discover the invention of the T-800, as well as trying to search for Kyle Reese, and Kyle Reese is going to be in search of the resistance, much like how it is in the actual movie. So essentially Marcus Wright takes an extreme backseat in the storyline. Like I said, we finally get the future war that we've been seeing since Terminator 1. You know, the Resistance is trying to figure out why John Connor is so knowledgeable of Skynet and the Terminators. The only one who knows about this is, again, Catherine Brewster, who's married to John Connor at this point. John Connor doesn't almost die in this movie. So we're going to scrap that right now. He doesn't almost die. You know, so the fight that he has with the T-800 is going to be him and Kyle Reese in that fight, and they both stop the, the T-800 together. 
that's what's going to happen. We're going to we're going to do a time jump to five years into the future, and this is where the resistance discovers the time displacement field, which is used to send back terminators to the past. And this is this is when they start, you know, reconfiguring it so they can use it so they can send back Kyle Reese to send to save Sarah Connor. Now here's where Marcus Wright comes back into play because if you remember, Marcus Wright was essentially a Terminator human hybrid. So here's what's gonna happen in my Terminator Salvation. John Kyle Reese and Marcus Wright both volunteer to save Sarah, but of course. John Connor, knowing what he knows, sends back Kyle to go save her or protect her. While in transit, much like in Terminator Genesis, while in transit, while Connor is in the time of place and he's getting ready to be sent back to the past, John Connor is attacked by Marcus Wright. So the Terminator human hybrid essentially attacks John Connor, much like how... Um, Matt Smith's Terminator in Genesis attacks John Connor the same way. Which leads me into Terminator Genesis, which I am simply just calling Terminator. That's all it is. So you're going to have Terminator No Fate, which is Terminator 3, Terminator Salvation, which stays, and you're going to have Terminator Genesis, which is simply just going to be called Terminator. So Terminator Genesis, now before I get into this, let me just make something very clear. I'm probably one of the few people on this planet that didn't hate Terminator Genesis. I actually liked the concept where it was going. I actually I actually thought it was a pretty nice change for the Terminator franchise. Think about it. We spent all these movies with John Connor as the savior of humanity. Let's flip it on his head. Now we have John Connor who's the enemy of humanity. I call me cheesy if you want, but I honestly thought that was a nice little swerve. It didn't help the fact that they pretty much gave it away in the posters and in the trailers. They gave it away. If they had kept that little tidbit under wraps, Terminator Genesis might have fared well in the box office. But that's just my opinion. Needless to say, there are some things with Genesis that still could be fixed, in my opinion. So, for my Terminator Genesis, which is simply called Terminator. It's going to start out the same way. Instead of starting out with the future war and stuff and John Connor and Connery's being sent back, that's already happened in Salvation. So Terminator is going to start like Terminator 1. The T-800 arrives in 1984. Connery's arrives in 1984, and it's just going to play out the same way. So, you know, John Connery's runs into the T-1000, uh, the T-800 is sent back, but this time you have the Pops Terminator who is there and helps destroy it and him and Sarah kind of destroy it. You know, so the only thing I really changed about Genesis or Terminator was some of the continuity issues. So in this instance, Genesis is not Skynet. Legion is Skynet. As you guys know, Legion is the new, is the new Skynet in Terminator Dark Fate. Essentially, Judgment Day essentially was stopped, but somehow a new, a new, and to quote Solomon, a new power has risen, and that's Legion. So, in order to keep up with continuity, Genesis is Genesis is Legion, and Legion is Skynet. So Legion appears here in Terminator, not Genesis. John Connor, again, who is the T three is the T three thousand. He is the first successful human Terminator prototype. He's the first successful one because even in the movies, they said he's the first one. They've tried this experiment with multiple humans, but they all end up dying. John Connor is the first successful one. And as far and instead of becoming the T-3000, he's the L-1. I changed him to he's Legion 1. He's the first Legion Terminator. So he's L-1. So... One of the biggest continuity issues that Terminator Genesis had was the fact that a T-800, which is essentially Pops, was sent back in time to protect child Sarah Connor from a T-1000. In the movie, we have no idea who sent him back. When, John, when Kyle Reese is asking him, who sent you back? What does he say? That's classified. Where are those files? There's classified. That doesn't help. 
So, in order to help with some continuity issues, the T-800 that, sent, that was sent back to protect Kid Sarah Connor, I'm going to make it being sent back from Kyle. I'm going to have Kyle Reese be the one to send back the T-800 to protect Kid Sarah Connor. We don't find out about that until the end of the movie, though. So that's where the, that's where that's going to happen. So the basically basically the movie ends with the now reformed the uh, modified T one T eight hundred, which is the T one thousand pops. Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese they're all traveling to destroy anything linked to Legion. As you know, they drew up the uh, I guess the main lab where Genesis was being created, but it's an AI system, so it can exist anywhere. So that's pretty much what pops. Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese do at the end of the movie. They just go and hunt Terminators. That's what they do. So now this leads us into the last installment, which is Terminator Dark Fate. Now, like I said, Rise of the Machines is called No Fate. I'm going to keep this title the same. I'm just going to say Terminator Dark Fate. Now, again, I have not seen Dark Fate. So, but I do pretty much know what the basis of the story is. So, there's only a couple of the changes I made to Terminator Dark Fate uh, uh, as of right now. So, spoilers if you guys are not aware of this, but every all of you should be <laughs> aware of this at this point. It's probably been one of the most controversial issues talked about for Terminator Dark Fate since its release. And that is simply the fact that John Connor basically dies in the first two, movie, first two minutes of the movie. He's dead. He's killed by a T-800 that was sent back to kill him. So, John Connor dies. Man, it, 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 it's, it's, on the one hand, I understood what they were trying to do. But on the other hand, it's like, it's, it's John Connor. We just literally spent, we spent five movies, we spent five movies and a TV series Following the journey of Sarah Connor trying to protect John Connor so he can become the great military leader against the machines. And then you just bust a cap at him in the first two minutes of this movie. And that is a big fat doo-doo no-no in my book. And it's, it's saying, and I know a lot of people that feel the same exact way right now. So to change that up. I'm going to have Kyle Reese die within the first two minutes of Dark Fate. We don't know, we don't even know if John Connor is even born. So we're just going to, we're just going to leave it at that. We're, I'm going to have Kyle Reese die. So, and it's going to, it's going to harken back to what Sarah Connor was saying in Terminator Genesis. That anyone, I think, I think the line was like anyone who, you know, loves me or be, gets wrapped up in my life, life ends up dying. So it's going to kind of play into that little self-professed prophecy that she has for herself that anyone attached to her just automatically dies. So that's what's going to happen. But it's not going to be the T-800 that kills him. It's going to be a T-1000 that kills him. So a T-1000 kills Kyle in the beginning of the movie. I think everything else should stay the same. But here's another major change that I made to Dark Fate. As opposed to Danny just Danny Ramos just being the new leader of the resistance for the future against Legion, I'm gonna change it up to the point where Danny is actually the daughter of Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese. So they don't have John. They have Danny instead. But Danny is I mean I mean that's gonna be her name, Danielle Connor, of course, like that, but What's going to end up happening is they give they give her up for adoption, and they give her up for adoption to Enrique's family. If you guys remember Enrique, he was the guy that was helping Sarah kind of prepare as far as weapons is concerned back in Terminator Two. They killed him all in Terminator: The Sarah Connor Chronicles, which was whack. I don't know why they did that, but the series itself was actually pretty okay, so I'll let it slide. So. Danny ends up being raised by Enrique and his family. So that's where she gets the name Danny Ramos. But in actuality, she is Danny Connor. She is Danielle Connor. She is the daughter of Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese. So they have a girl instead of a boy. Everything else pretty much still plays out the same. You know, we still have Grace, who is the Terminator human hybrid that, sent, that was sent back to protect her. You know, 
sarah is of course helping danny survive and all this stuff and of course the t eight hundred the it's the pops t eight hundred so basically what happens with the pops t eight hundred is he just basically so much like um the terminator the t eight hundred in dark fate the pops terminator is gonna be the same thing so they basically they kind of just part ways. She's he's been helping her kill Terminators between the time between the time Kyle dies and up until you know Danny becomes like a young adult. So it's gonna be Pops. You know, he still he finds a family, of course, of his own. All much like in Terminator Dark Fate. But it's gonna be Pops is it not just some random Terminator that just automatically develops a conscience. I think if anyone should develop a conscience, it should be Pops. He should be the one. I mean, we saw glimpses of it in Terminator Genesis. With the way he cared for Sarah Connor, like one of the lines, you know, in the final battle with um John Connor, was it was Pops telling Kyle protect my Sarah. That should have been a start right there. That automatically should have been a start right from there. So we're just gonna keep that going. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that's how I would fix the Terminator franchise as it stands right now. Um, I hope you guys actually enjoyed my little rendition of the changes I made to the Terminator franchise starting from Terminator Rise of the Machines. Um, like I said, I it, this, this didn't take me long. These were just ideas that I had in my head over the past couple of months or so. Um, and I just figured, again, these movies do exist. So why not find a way to make them more part of the continuity than just ignoring them? So... Those are the changes that I will make to the remaining Terminator franchise as it stands right now. I will, I think, I still will try to go see Terminator Dark Fate. The one, one of the things that I know has been a plus to the movie is the fact that the action is very good. So, uh, I'll see it for that. But as far as the story plot is concerned, I'm pretty much aware of what the story is. I knew before the movie even came out what the story plot was going to be. So, there's not going to be a surprise for me there. But this is what I did with the Terminator franchise. I hope you enjoyed it. If there are changes that you would have made to the Terminator franchise in any of the um, installments, post it in the comment section below. Let's get a discussion going. I would definitely like to hear what your ideas are as far as fixing the Terminator franchise. Post your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about my changes. If you enjoyed this reworking or this fixing of the Terminator franchise, Hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Share this video with all your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. I'm out. Peace.